So you're a dude from the BX who is part of the hip hop generation and you find yourself in love with music. That means you're gonna make beats, right? But how do you make a career out of it? How do you use that career to do television, to do live concerts, and to make a story career at Black Entertainment Television? But you ain't black, and that's a whole other conversation. But you are part of the hip hop game. I'm gonna introduce you to a brother who's gonna show you how to make big choices and take bold chances to take the thing you love and make a life and a career and begin to build a legacy out of it. Because Maximino Perez, Maximino, the only mighty Max is with us on this edition of Now One. One foot in front of the other. somebody else's show and there it is again and there it is again. And so when I was working on Parallel Pass, I think it was the first, well you probably did some stuff for me for specials at BET too, but right. Max was always my go-to guy who had in his own pocket, literally, <laughs> his own music. It's like, yeah, just go ahead and use that. Right. But a black industry is like, go ahead and use that. But notarized, go ahead and use that. So just on pu in public and on camera, a billion thank yous. Always. But tell me where that came from, like the dude from the BX who felt, you know, felt this passion for music. Where did that come from and how did you start to put it Emotion. Well, I, I guess I, to start, I have to thank my mother, you know. Um, I grew up in the Bronx, the home of hip-hop, um, and in the streets, I'm listening to the music, I'm hearing the music. Um, my mom put me in a marching band at the age of five, so I was holding this big drum. <laughs> I was like this big. <laughs> so she put me in, in, in a marching band, um, it's called the Shining Stars, and that's where um, I got rhythm, you know what I'm saying? Rhythm. Rhythm came from, from, from being in a marching band, you know, playing the snare drum. And um, so that, that's where my start from. My mom always put me in different things to keep me busy. She didn't want me in the street, so I got to thank moms for that. So then from there, I became a dancer. Like, break dancing became really big in the 80s. Um, and I was a, a b-boy. I was in a group called the East Bronx Breakers. And that's where my love for hip hop really grew. I was 11 years old and I was traveling, touring, and performing at Giant Stadium. Um, we won contests. So that's really where hip hop, you know, got in my blood and that was it. So then, you know, um, I danced all the way to about the age of 18, or 17, 18, and it was time to figure out, all right, what am I going to do with my life? What do I want to do? And and I said, I want to be in the music business. I wanted to be an artist my first time. I wanted to sing. I'm a singer, you know? So um, I was like, wow, I don't know anybody. So I was doing fairly well in school. That I'm, I was like six months ahead. So I went to summer school two years in a row to, to, um, to just because my mom said, go to summer school. You know, I want you in the street. So I went to summer school. And um, so I was eligible for this internship program and I didn't know what I wanted to do but I knew that I wanted to do music so I was like I raised my hand it was like the last day they were like do you want to go check this intern thing out because you got six months we want you to be you know in an internship program I was like all right I didn't even know what it was right, right, right. Um, at that time so I went to the meeting and it sounded cool everybody wanted to be you know a lawyer in the doctor's office and then I was like do you have a recording studio and she was like hmm. you know back then it's like you know I don't know, but I'm going to get back to you on that. So the next day she got back to me and she was like, well, I found a place that wants to accept, you know, interns, but it's not a music studio. It's a post-production facility, uh, okay. you know? Okay. So I was like, what is that? You know, I'm a kid from the street, you know what I mean? I don't know what that is. I had no clue. And I had no clue about recording or anything. I just knew that I wanted to do music. So I went... The guy showed me around, I'll never forget his name, he changed my life, his name is John Edelman. And 
you know, I, I started answering. I was like, why not? You know, what am I going to do? So, um, at, at the post production facility, they were doing commercials, um, radio commercials, they were doing TV spots, they were doing MTV jams, they were doing all these different things that I never even right. knew, like, how these things happen. So, so, so I'm in a post-production facility and I'm in love with music, so I'm really not in the right place. So at that time, I didn't really realize what a blessing it was because I wanted to do music. You know what I'm saying? This is, I can't, you know. So I, I started working, I worked hard, and um, you know, I, I uh, went above you know, the call of duty and I would leave work, you know, had a job, I would come back and help them with whatever they needed to do. So they appreciated that and they saw that my passion for this was really big, you know? So I kept asking the boss, because you know, I had six months there, then I was back on the, road, on the street. So I kept asking the boss, I need a job, I need a job, when I graduate, I need a job. So two months before, they couldn't hire me, because I was in school, they couldn't hire me, I was a kid still. So two months before I was about to graduate, a position became available, but they filled it with somebody else, and I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, there goes my position, like, you know? So I continued working hard, doing whatever I needed to do, and I was, I, I guess they saw, like, like I said, I had a lot of passion, I wanted to do this. When I graduated, they fired the guy, and they hired wow. me. And they hired me, and that right there just changed my life completely. I started earning $350 a week, you know? From the kid from the hood, that's like, wow, you know what I mean? So I was excited about that, but more importantly, that's where I started developing as an engineer, and um, you know, and I had to do a lot of different things at the job. The positions, my position required me to look for sound effects for commercials, look for music beds. Right. So there was a big library with all these CDs, so I would have to pick music that was appropriate for the job, you know. So it gave me the skills that I needed to move forward. So then, short story, long story short, I met like a mentor of mine. Her name is Yvonne May. She, I took, she took a liking to, she was president of Sony Music. Um, um, the promotion side, and um, and she was she was like the big cheese. Everybody, all the like the the, the staff when she came in was like, oh my god, so Yvonne's coming in, we gotta do the job. Of so, but she was a sweet, and I just started talking, and I was like, you know, I'm trying to do music. Blah, 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 blah. And she was like, all right. But she told me because I thought you, yeah, yeah. She told me I thought you were cute for my daughter. That's what she told me. So she took a liking to me, and we, you know, we nothing ever happened with that. But she took a liking to me, and she took me under my under her wing, and she taught me a lot. Like she was like my mentor, you know. And she took me to cool parties, so I could just see what the music industry brought me into. My first, you know, record label building. I went into Sony. I was like, wow, this is Sony. So yeah, right, she on. got me my next job. She recommended me to another place. It was called Image Group Post, and there, that's when I started doing like that's when I was doing more music stuff. Right. More music people would come in. It still was commercials, but like Def Jam was there, um, Diddy was there, um, um, Big Dog Films, um, Hype Williams. You know what I'm saying? So all these people were the clients there. Was, I had a million dollar room. I was on an SSL console. I mean, I was like, it was amazing. So the experience was was awesome. Um, when I look at look at it now, I, I feel like um, like I I blew a lot of opportunities, but I was young. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's a lot of because you were yeah. talking about being in a million dollar or in a million dollar room and having access to all these opportunities. You say I blew it. So was that because you couldn't figure out how to focus, or you didn't know what no, you had? Or? I was I was I didn't know what I had. Number one, but I was more. Um, Oh, I just want to do music and the rest of it. No, no. I was a teenager. I was young. I wanted to go out and right. have fun. Right. So, you know, I wanted to be girls. You know, that was like my thing at the time. And I had no... I mean, my mentor was there. She kind of told me, but I needed... My father... My father was always there, but he was not... He was, you know, he was from Puerto Rico. He didn't know. Right. You know, you know, I love him, too, but he didn't know. He, he didn't know... What he I know how to, how to he help me. Seize this opportunity conversation. Right. It was like, had the right. It, it was more like, oh, you got a good job. You got to keep it. Yeah, exactly. You know, keep it safe. Don't mess it up. Right. And you know, instead of like, take the, you know, right. like I teach my kids now, take the opportunity, learn. Like, yeah, don't take it for granted. And I was taking everything I had for granted at that moment in my life. I had this 
studio that I had complete access to, I wouldn't use it as to the right. capacity that I could. And you know, eventually I learned, and you know, I learned, but that, that experience right there kind of made me insecure. I, I started focusing on, on the negative things, like, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, instead of saying, um, you need to, to learn, keep learning, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, to make a long story short, from there I went to, to, to work at Fox News Channel, so it really took me out of oh, music, right? right? But the re and, and, and I did it for the wrong reason, again, the money. You see what I'm saying? The money. I had countless of opportunities to be like, I want to work for you, like Puff, you know what I'm saying? I, I could have been like, I want to work for you, I'll do whatever it takes. But I didn't do that. I went for the, you know, I was making $30,000 at that job. I went for the $60,000 right. job. And it's Fox, so it makes and more sense. Fox. Like, yeah, like, go you know, on Channel 5. Exactly. So I went to work for, it wasn't Channel 5, it was the Fox News Channel that was the oh, was cable, news channel, okay. cable channel. But still, they had enough. It had enough cash and it was brand new. Know what it meant. Yeah. Right, and it hadn't even launched. It was like a brand new channel. Um, I was making a great salary. I was going to be an audio engineer for Fox News. You know what I'm saying? So I took the job. Right. And I did it, and I didn't like it. Right. You know, I was there for four years. I spent four years there because at that time, I was about to have a baby. I need some security. That's your fault. I needed insurance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I did that for a year, and then I d d decided to cut the cord. I, everybody thought like you were crazy to leave BT. We had that conversation, right? Before. We had that conversation before. I was crazy to leave Fox yeah, yeah. because I was going to BT. I was going to become a freelance, no insurance, nothing. But but music. I was going to be around music. So what was that? So so how did that happen? You had four Fox News Channel. Literally, outside of your wheelhouse, outside of your passion. And so how does the BET opportunity even come up for you? Right. So, I, uh, I, you know, while I'm at Fox, I'm working on music at the same okay. time. Okay. All the time. From, you know, the time I was at the other studios working on music, but I'm getting more passionate about it, more passionate about it. Um, a, a friend of mine comes to me. He's building the studio up on 106th Street. He's like, hey, you know, BET is coming to New York. And I'm like, oh, yeah? He was like, yeah, they're building, they're building a studio up in Metropolis. Um, call this lady, you should check it out. I'm like, all right, I'm going to call. And it happened, when I call, the lady happens to be a lady that worked at Fox. She just left Fox like six months before. And she started crewing um, uh, Maria Gonzalez. Ah, Remember her? Of course. Yeah. So Maria Gonzalez had got a job at BT crewing production. Right, right, right. So as soon as I called, she's like, hey, Max. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to put you on. Come through. Just like that. It was literally just like that. But the, So I didn't leave Fox completely yet. I was doing both jobs. So I would wake up. I would have to be at Fox at 6 in the morning, 6 to 1. And then I would have to be at BT at 2 o'clock, 2 to 10. That's when they had this really long shift that night. So I was working from 6 in the morning all the way to about 12 midnight when we were doing Rack City at night. So I was doing that for two weeks and then I saw how much fun and the potential it was for me to stay there. So I was like, I'm gonna cut Fox off. You know, I'm not gonna do that. I'll do that freelance if I can. And so then I started working at BT on day one with 106 and Park. And a lot of people, just as a sidebar, a lot of people didn't realize that 106 and Park was literally at 106 and Park. And so, but so backpedal this for me because one of the things that now what is about is about people being able to seize opportunities. So I didn't hear any break off to go to college to learn this technical stuff. So well, how did the dude who loved music find himself in that post-production house? And then you said you weren't taking advantage of it. But clearly you were taking advantage you of something. You know what? You know what? And you're right. You're absolutely right. Because I did take advantage. I did go. When, when I applied to Berkeley School of Music, um, but I didn't have the finances. Uh, to go there. Right. So what I did was I while I was working at Superdue because they had hired me, I was going to Manhattan Community College and I went there for one year. But then I realized I'm doing what I want to do. I'm here, I'm in the door. You know what I'm saying? So I stopped going to school. Do I regret that? Yeah, because I know I'm gonna learn something that I needed to that development, but I didn't get into debt. I didn't get into eight thousand dollars debt coming out of school trying to figure it out, you know what I'm saying? 
I was making money and I was saving money and I was learning at the same time. And, and that's one thing that I know I, I, I learned, but I, didn't, I don't feel like I took full advantage of it. So that's the whole college right. experience for me. I just decided, you know what, I'm in the door, I'm going to just go hard and do this like this. And I think that decision worked out for me. So talk to me about being at BET and um, and the door opening to be in a music environment and playing your you know audio technician audio engineer role and then being able to kind of sneak your music because I remember the first time we really engaged I think I was working on a Martin Luther King special or a, 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 a promo or something and I couldn't find any music that worked and he was like I think I might have something and you brought it the next day. I was like, this is great. What was this yesterday? And it was yours. Right. Well, the way that happened is, I'm going a, I'm to a flash to a little earlier. So around 2000, when I started at BET, I also um, got in the music business with an, a producer named Robert Cavillis. Okay. So and Robert Cavillis is CNC Music, music Factory. Factory. They, they were really big in the 90s, huge in the 90s. You know, they, you know all the records they did. So, you know, back in... Don't make you sweat. Things that make you go, hmm, I'm just thinking. On and on and on. Um, with Houston. Yeah. You know, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. So I, I knew about Robert, and I knew that you know his partner David had died, and I knew that he was doing his thing, and I wanted to be partners with this guy so bad. I wanted to work with him. So I got the opportunity to to meet him, and I brought him an artist. He loved her, signed her, um, but I was kind of left out. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't see me yet. You know what I'm saying? So then that whole group thing happened. And then one day he calls me. He's like, he knows that I'm, I want to be an artist. So I'm in a group now that Robert Cabillas is producing. And, you know, we do the whole industry thing. Doing shows, developing, recording, boom. The group never works out. A year after that, Robert calls me again. He's like, look, I want to start a label. And I want you to help me. And I was like, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm working at BET now. Um, but I, I'll do both, you know what I'm saying? So when I was at BT, I was working with Robert. So long story short, with Robert, we had a hit, two hit records together um, with a group called MVP featuring Stagger Lee. Um, I was able, through my relationships at BT, I was able to get the video played on a late night show that allowed us to get a deal with Universal. That's the power of BT back in 2000, you know what I'm saying? So, we ended up getting a deal with Tommy Matola's label, um, Casablanca. We were the first artist signed to that label because he had switched and left Sony and went to Universal. So we ended up getting on there. So, long story short, um, <laughs> I keep saying that, right? It's, right. it's a <laughs> um, long story, you have to make it short, it's okay. Um, so, the whole situation with Robert doesn't work out, okay. and I leave the group. And so, this, the, the, this is the artist thing doesn't work. The, the artist thing and the and producer the, stuff, okay, and you know what I'm saying, with him. Right. It doesn't work out and I move on and I don't know what I'm going to do. This group looks like it's going to blow up. I don't know what I'm going to do. I leave because a lot of reasons, but it's just what I wasn't there anymore, right. you know what I'm saying? So um, I start thinking about what am I going to do with all this music that I have? Because I was constantly making, while I'm at BET doing audio and, and working on the show, I. I was bringing in a laptop computer real early before people were even working on laptops mm -hmm. and actually producing tracks while I'm at, on the set. I had a little cubby hole that I had and um, producing every day, producing, producing, producing. Like a laptop changed my production output because before, you know, before the laptop, I would have to go home and work. Right. So now I brought the studio with me anywhere I went, you know. So I started making all this music, 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 music. And then I realized that BT needed a library because they had one guy that was doing it and nobody, and they just had this much music. Right. Right. History, jazz, right. history, gospel, and that's kind of it. Jazz, gospel, the couple of Right, everybody. so I went up to Penny McDonald. Actually, Lee Harris was the first one. You remember Lee Harris? Mm -hmm. Lee Harris was the first guy to use my music, but I was haunting Penny every day to, can you listen to my music? Please listen to my music. I got, like, Andrew, Penny, listen. She's like, Max, you know, Dude, give me a break. Like, 
we send my so then one day she was like, we gotta listen to it today. Me and Steven are gonna go listen to your music. Stephen Hill. It's me and Stephen Hill gonna listen right. to your music today. And I remember like, damn, damn, I hope they listen to it. Next day she comes, she comes out, she's like, you in? Stephen loved it. Um, I went into the office, she walked me into the office, and Steve was like, this track right here, I want to keep it for me. And anyway, so I got the gig, you know what I'm saying? So besides being an audio engineer, I'm now producing music for... We had to music. Yeah, yeah. We, we had like eight shows, and I'm doing all of it, you know? Like, I was overwhelmed, you know? And so I started doing that, and that was a blessing, you know? And then, um, <laughs> yeah, and then it, it was like, wow, like I'm doing all this music. But then again, I got comfortable. I got comfortable. Instead of um, expanding on what I already had built and really taking it to the next, I got comfortable. I relaxed. And I didn't take so advantage. So you got comfortable. So, so that's a really kind of a thing to crack open. Did you get comfortable in the I found my pocket in BET or comfortable in the dad voice that says you got a good job kind of massage that or was it kind of a both of them it was both of them okay. um i had a good job the networking at 106 and park was amazing mm -hmm. you know saying everybody's coming through there i don't have to go search for anybody and i mean people don't realize that because we were at 106 and park we were i mean people came to 106 and park and kind of hung out like you yeah, could yeah. walk in the dressing rooms and yeah, they, yeah. They, remember they remember bobby and whitney surprised and people was every those people there because they came to hang out. Right, so and the show was super hot. At that super point. hot. It's kick TRL's back out. Yeah, so I, I'm like, wow, I don't really need to go anywhere. I can stay right here and do this job and still do my music, you know? So I'm doing that for a couple of years, and we do 2008 comes. We lose one show. We lose two shows. We lose three shows. Now we're done to one show. And Come then, you know, you. and then BT decides to go in another direction with music, the whole music strategy, and I'm kind of pushed out, which, which happens, you know what I'm saying? So again, now I'm a little upset, but I still like the opportunity of being at 106 and Park, but now I gotta go do other things. So I start producing different artists of my own, you know, spending money on videos and stuff, and we did good independently. Um, so, you know, some things don't work out, you know, when you, when you are an independent um, producer, artist, you gotta, I thought that I could do it all myself, and it's nothing like that. You need a team. You need a team to to make anything out of it, you know? And at that moment, I, I, I thought, you know, I'm gonna make this happen. I have a lot of connections, I, have, I make music, I'm an engineer, I can make this happen. And that was another mistake, you know, that I had to go through to figure it out. So, um, that's the whole music part of it. And now you know that BET is over. Um, now I'm trying to figure out, now what? Right, <laughs> so, I mean, and that's real because how, how do you kind of get to that realization? You know, it's like, you know, it's still BET, so your card still says the same thing. You know what I mean? So if you, if you, not, if you don't get lost in the ego of that, you could just sit and wallow in it. But there's a, a creative you that needs to do stuff with us, the dad you, because the dad you, you know, wait, because I remember you working at Bethany for a while, or remember you taking well, on other gigs. Well, you know, but you were still doing BET too. You all, you know, you right. sure you ain't Jamaican because you be having several jobs. Well, you know, I, uh, one thing that I, I have to say, and in, in 2000, I didn't. I had to leave BET. I, I was not a BET employee anymore. Okay. Not 2000. That's 2002. Right. Oh. When they moved. Year. When they made, right. When they made the move to go from 106 and Park to the CBS. Building. I had to become a CBS technician. Oh. Which was, a, at first I thought it was bad, but it, again, it came out to be a blessing. So that was because of the union and the right. position you Exactly. So in order for me to work in the building, I had to become a union, and the money had to flow through CBS. Ooh. So I no longer was a BT employee, but I just worked over there. Right. You know, and so, so I was a freelancer. But, you know, that was a blessing in disguise as well, because now they would call me for Bethany. Ah. For CBS Sports. I'm not a CBS employee. I'm not an employee, but I'm a freelance contractor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, all their instead of this one. So. Exactly. Yeah. And I was doing both. Right. You know? So that's where all the other experiences oh, okay. came from. And so what were the other experiences? Um, what kind of, what does that Nate, CBS Nate, blessing look like? Nate Burkus, Bethany Franco. Nate, Frank, Frank, Nate Burkus, Bethany Franco. Um, 
they got NFL today, that's what I'm doing that now. Okay. Um, doing sports, which is a whole nother thing. And um, they, I mean, they have a lot of different right. programs. So I could, I could go in there and do my, my audio engineering job, right. you know? And at the so same, what do you do at the same time? Go ahead. At the same time, I'm still working on music. Right. So right now, what I'm focused on is, is working on my son. He's a 15-year-old um, DJ who's done amazing things from the time he's uh, 11. He's performed at Masters Garden. He's an Intel DJ, flies around the country. So I brought my family into the game. I mean, they grew up, you know, in the household, so I'm doing now. What when I say now, what I'm so, I'm excited about now, what you know, mm -hmm. because I have a different mindset now. Before it was a more of a fixed mindset. Now I'm more of a growth mindset. I'm ready to learn whatever I need to learn. I'm excited about the opportunities that I have right now and the different companies that I'm starting. And um, I'm just looking to to take it there, you know. And I'm not scared. So what's the lesson? So this is beautiful to me that having your son follow the legacy of what you wanted to create shook you loose. So what are the lessons that your son has taught you that you wish your father had taught you? Because clearly your father gave you a solid work ethic. So yeah. you got that part down. Yeah. But what does your son come along to kind of shake you loose to do so you can get to this now what place where you're like, I'm not afraid. And, and you know, what, think, what is the thing you want to give birth to now? I think, I mean, I think it's more the mindset that I have, okay, okay. you know, right. um, it's all with me, you know what I'm saying, it's my, the way I think about and the way I approach situations, you know, we all get lazy sometimes, you know what I'm saying, and um, we don't try our hardest or keep learning, and when I say I got stuck kind of, sort of, mm -hmm. at 15 years, that's what happened, mm -hmm. it was just like, oh, good you money, know? good times, good people, you know, but it's not really learning, it's not, right. it's not really growing, you know, and that's what happened to me in those years. Mm -hmm. Granted, it was a great opportunity, but now I'm excited because now I have to push the limit. Right. I have to go. I have to hustle. I have right. to. I have to make something happen. You get to invest in you because we were talking earlier, and when I um, the the 18 days between Aaliyah and 9/11 was really my kind of last. I remember uh, that. It's like I'm in ministry. God was like, I need you, and I need you now. And like I remember. Uh, having a, I was having conversations with celebrities in dressing rooms and praying in dressing rooms and having conversations in the hallway and I was like, I feel like it's almost time to go, but I don't know. I think I need a sign. And oddly enough, the sign that it was time for me to leave BET was when Brandy, who I'd known since she was 12 and still had the cassette of her first album and her, I remember her on Lydia Cole's couch, like, you like my album? And she comes in at 106 and Park, like into the building with her mother who's walking in and says, I love Sonia. And Sonia's like, I don't know this building. These are new people, so we may not know them from the DC era. Right. And then Brandy looked at me. She was like, "Oh my God, Uncle Kevin!" And ran up to me and hugged me so tight. And so you was looking at me like, "Oh, you know what I mean?" And it was just kind of like, "Yeah, it's time to go. My babies are grown now. It's time to step out in this newness." But people will get in your head when you're at a great job with great benefits that are not just financial, but you know, relationship. Yeah, your Instagram is. Follow only Mighty Max on Instagram and you see the people you encounter. And so I'm saying that because yeah, your son has like shifted and shook loose this passion to have the passion again. So what are you working on? You're working on your son and you got a 15 year old DJ traveling the world, but what's it calling up in you for you to do that you hadn't done before? What's Max's now like? It's more of the, the entrepreneurial okay. um, side of me. You know, I've always had it in me, um, but being at a fixed position, you know, like I got to know that Mondays and Wednesdays I'm there. Right. Now the entrepreneur, I've always been an entrepreneur, but more, I'm more excited about it now because um, I have a lot of opportunities, I have a lot of skills that I want to share and, and, and put out there, you know. So that's what's exciting about it to me, you know. I know it's scary, like financially, like, all right, I got to make this happen, you know, I have a house, I have. Like, I got bills, you know yeah. what I mean? But um, I'm not worried about it. And I'm, you know, and I did, I, I, I think I did a good job with the finances that I earned. Okay. And, um, and I'm learning every day about it. I, I went to trading school, believe it or not. 
in 2008, I wanted to do a little something, so I went into the, to, to trade school because I figured that at like 60, I'm gonna, that's what I'm doing, sit home, get on my laptop, <laughs> and check my stocks. <laughs> So I went to trade school, and that's something that I'm, I'm interested in. I'm, I'm interested in finance, I'm interested um, in, in production, I'm interested in, in growing, I'm interested in, in building something right. new. You know? And I think, so, um, one of the things that you just said that kind of sparked my brain for me, that I really hope that the now what viewers are paying attention to, is your transition from independent thinking, which really is kind of, I'm on here, out here on my own, you know, but you still took your independence and kind of married it to other people's things. And your entrepreneur, which really is, I stand alone and I work on that. Because entrepreneur is French for risk taker. Right. And Sometimes there's no book is, for that. Right. There's no, there's no book. There's no book for that. There's no book for that. There's no book for that. That's something. There's no book for that. Yeah. That's what this whole show is about, is that people are always trying to say, then what? And then what did you do? And it really is, now what? Like, you get to a spot. You get comfortable with it, you make the connection, so now you got the spot, some money, some connection. Now what? What exactly. you gonna do with it? And, and you know what? And I'm grateful for all of that. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. You know, the other day I was um I woke up and I was not in a good space. You know, sometimes that happens. Right. You know? And I had to just shift my mindset and be like, think of all the things you do have. And that changed my whole day when I thought about right. I get up and get up and I exactly. feel good. I, I feel good, I'm working out. Um, my family is good, you know what I'm saying? I got a studio downstairs that I built that I could work and make something out of nothing, you know what I'm saying? So changing little mindsets like that is, is, is the key to, to continuing to grow and, and to not fall into a bad place, you know what I'm saying? So, and so that's, a, that's what we want to leave in. So hear that. Your now what experience is every day. Because in those days when the day isn't going right, when the thing isn't going right, when people aren't acting right, you still have the opportunity to change your mind about your mission. You know, and okay. so it's beautiful. I, I hope you took it by uh, Max Perez. His company is called Mighty One Music, and so it's mom. And did you use that? Because I said, you got your tagline has got to be Mighty One Music. We birth beats. I love that. <laughs> I saw that the other day. I was like, you gotta use that. that you excellent. gotta use that. We birth beats. We birth beats. Max Avino Perez. <laughs> Mom, Mighty One Music, we birth beats. I'm looking forward to it. I thank you. I appreciate you. Again, for all the creativity that you have just given away for free in the passion of your gift. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, but you're not always in New York. I appreciate you. Thank you. Buddy or your crony or your mate. I am the alteration to your fate. I am the member to your riches when you have an empty plate. But do you hide behind a bottle? Can't just tell me how you feel. How could you quantify your brother off in dollar bills? I took the red and hit you big enough to blue pill. Why do my cousins live in houses built on landfills? But when you open up your mouth, I think of landfills. Reaching a quota, you think I'm barely sober. Remember last October when I messaged you? Made attempts to be really vocal. Everybody wanted to poke you, wanted to coach you. Heard you were running far. Heard you knew man was in med school and he had a nice car. So when you think of me, you probably think of my mother. So yo, the way you want to call, you're probably barely sober. I'm deep in your unconscious, only thinking me for your unconscious. Like that time I had that gat in my hand and I couldn't cock it. They time to kill my brother and I couldn't stop it. Dream schemes and multi-rockets.